Classified Pentagon documents uh, were leaked. The New York Times reported that uh, a significant breach of American intelligence in the effort to aid Ukraine through the leak of classified documents, which have been shared on social media. Tell us about the, this leak and what these documents show. They appeared first on Discord, and then they started circulating around uh, various Telegram channels. Uh, the Pentagon, for their part, they tried to get them removed and tried to... Uh, uh, you say, oh, there's nothing to see here. These are hack materials. But for some reason, and I'm not exactly sure what that reason is, the mainstream media has decided not to suppress these leaks as they have in the past with other critical leaks. The first place I saw this, who actually published some screenshots of the documents, was at the Gray Zone. Um, and, you know, the, the documents were pretty interesting. It was by uh, Alex Rubenstein, who's a great journalist. Uh, and he was going through some of the major findings of this. Uh, one of the key ones was that the casualty figures, uh, a on both sides, are a lot lower than what we've been what we've been being told in the media and in the the estimates uh, by officials on either side. Uh, the numbers are far lower, but they're still disproportionate. the The Russians are losing far fewer people than the Ukrainians, uh, and it, it seems to be unsustainable. Now, it should be noted that the New York Times did say, did report that some military analysts do believe that the this part of the documents may have been altered in order to uh, uh, cast the Ukraine war in a more dire light than it already is being cast. Um, and I'll leave that to the experts to adjudicate uh, because, you know, I, I'm not a documents expert, uh, but I can only read what's been reported. But even if we take the other stuff at face value, uh, there's been a lot. Uh, there's things like uh, the U.S. might be backing Israel in an attack against Iran. Israel, pathways to providing lethal aid to Ukraine. So tell us about this. All right. So this was uh, uh, one of the one of the leaked documents that it said that one of the situations in which uh, Israel might give more aid to Ukraine is that if the U.S. was to back it in an attack against Iran. Now, this is interesting. This uh, this charge against Israel attacking Iran is interesting because the U.S. and Israel, shortly before these documents are dated, engaged in some of the largest ever military drills aimed at, you know, showing force against Iran uh, and showing basically that Israel is ready for war. And in Israeli press, Israeli generals have been making a lot of harsh statements about Iran. And this is uh, the type of thing that tends to happen when you have a country in crisis, the way Israel is now, for a lot of reasons. Uh, but it, it's one of the many, it's one of the many behind the scenes things that's, uh, that seems to be being revealed by these documents. I mean, if the U.S. is planning specifically to it, try to encourage Israel to get more involved in the Ukraine war. Uh, well, uh, that says a lot about how they're handling the situation. That says a lot about how they're uh, uh, handling not only Israel's protests, but also like uh, the Ukraine war situation. If they if they feel the need to e enlist Israel in, in this fight, I mean, it shows that they're scrambling to find weapons. It shows that they're scrambling to find uh, as much support as they thought they had. Another leak said that U.S. intelligence had actually urged Mossad spies, you know, uh, that's basically the Israeli CIA, to join in the protests against Netanyahu, uh, which, if true, that's pretty uh, <laughs> that's pretty big. It seems like uh, the U.S. is sponsoring a counter-fascist color revolution in a fascist apartheid state. I don't know. The, the geopolitics of that get compli complicated fast. Yeah, that was uh, the story. Uh, trying to encourage um, Mossad agents to be a part of this protest. Um, it's been denied by officials in Israel, but denials mean nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah, but one of the most critical revelations in these leaked documents are that the U.S. doesn't think that the Ukrainian spring offensive, you know, the one that has been talked up, hyped up by Zelensky and U.S. officials and others, uh, they don't think that the spring offensive is going to be all that effective. Um, because 
well, most of the Ukrainian army is being built and trained and equipped by NATO, uh, they have a pretty good grasp uh, on the capabilities of this army, despite you know the, the claims that they're not involved. They, they have a pretty good grasp on what's going on. And officials don't believe that uh, that Ukraine will be able to do much in this spring offensive. Uh, so that's interesting that they're admitting that to themselves. And one of the key things we have to realize is that this is a far cry from the story that we're getting in the U.S. press uh, about how the war is going, about what the chances of something like retaking Crimea would be, what the chances of pushing the Russians back from uh, Donetsk, whether or not they can uh, uh, take uh, Bakhmut, which is slowly falling under Russian control. All of these things in the Western press, because like I said earlier, they're cheerleaders and they believe that they are part of this pro-democracy gang. Uh, and so they're willing to sweep inconvenient reports under the table. And they're willing to just accept U Ukrainian government figures and facts and explanations for things at face value. Uh, but the reality, according to these documents, is very different.